Good morning and welcome to the morning worship of the Abundant Love Church. I am Pastor Gary Bush. We are here this Sunday morning, this wonderful Christmas morning, celebrating the birth of our Savior. And so we invite you to worship with us this morning as you prepare for this day. And even though we give gifts to other people, we are fully aware of the great gift that God gave to us, that is his son. And so we shall worship him today in the beauty of holiness. Our opening selection is, O come all ye faithful, O come let us adore him. If you know it, sing it with us. O come all ye faithful, Joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. O come, let us adore. adore him oh come let us adore him cry the oh come let us adore him oh come let us oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ for he alone is worthy 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 he Christ for he alone is worthy 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 he cry cries the we'll praise his name forever we'll praise his name forever we'll praise his name forever we'll praise forever cry one more time we'll praise his name we'll praise his name forever we'll praise his name forever we'll praise his name forever cries the Lord. oh come let us adore him oh come let us Clap your hands in here. Come on, we came to praise him. We'll praise his name forever. We'll give him all the glory. Oh, come, let us adore him. We give him praise. We give you honor. And we praise your name. And we give you glory. Your name is worthy to be praised. Amen. And we've come to worship him today. Amen. Going to ask you to stand to your feet at this time. 
as we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer today. Amen. Elder Robert Bush is going to lead us in prayer this morning. You all receive him with a hearty amen. Glory to God. How many know the Lord is worthy? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. The greatest gift has already been given, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Gracious Father, as we come before you once again, we honor you this day, the day of your birth, the day that we will commemorate for the rest of our lives, for you alone are worthy. We thank you. We honor you and we magnify your name. We lift you up above the heavens because there is none like you. We pray now that you would continue to watch over us this day. Protect us. Keep your protective arm around us. Only you can withstand us. Only you have the power to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And we look to you. We honor you. We can't do anything but praise you. We're here to continue to lift you up. And as we go into this day, we pray that you would accompany us on every and each and everything that we do. We are just here to praise you, to worship you, to honor you, and to give you your due, to magnify your name above the heavens as only you deserve. Now we pray that you would watch over the nations that are warring. We pray that you would bring peace. Restore those nations to the way they were. Help the people to recover what they've lost as only you can. And I pray for the Haitian people. We don't hear much about them, but I know they're going through a turmoil themselves. And we pray that you would continue to intercede for them. Bring peace back to those regions as only you can. We understand that you are the only one to have power to be able to restore those things to the way they were. And just as they are, we are looking for you to come through as you always do because you don't fail. Now, as we go into this service, we pray that you would be in our midst, that you pour your spirit out on us, that you touch us, sweep the room, pour your spirit out on us, send the light of rain, and let it fill us that we may be able to continue to honor you the way that you deserve it. And now as we go forward, we pray that you would just get the honor, get the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands right there. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the reading of our scripture today by Minister Gary Bush, Jr. Would you all receive him with a hearty amen? This is a familiar passage of scripture. We will read together St. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Don't have it, say wait. (laughs) 
All right, once again, that is St. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 together. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. Once again, that is St. John 3, 16 and 17. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most importantly, the doers of his word. Now we're in the hands of the announcer. Good morning, everyone. We would like to thank everyone for coming out today and tuning in on this special Sunday morning worship as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our live streams are open while we're still observing the social distancing. We do require temperature checks at the door, and we ask that you face masks for your safety as well as others. For this month of December, we have been studying our theme, the gift of love. And this theme comes from John 3, 16 and 17. If you would like to be included on our email list, you can leave a comment below with your email address, or you can email us at abundantlove at frontier.com to receive weekly outlines. On Saturday, December the 31st, we will have our watch night. Our watch night service will start at 10 p.m. to bring in the new year together. On January the 2nd, we will travel to True Love Baptist Church. Our very own pastor, Gary Bush, will be the speaker for the city's 12th night revival. This is a 7 p.m. service. Please be in attendance. On Wednesday, January the 4th, Abundant Love will host the city's 12-night revival here at the church at 7 p.m. More details will be forthcoming. Our sick and recovering includes Reverend Philip and Flora Johnson, Diane Bush, Travion Hilliard, Rayfield Martin, Elder Robert Bush, Minister Winston Pearson, Dorothy Pearson, which is the mother of Winston Pearson. Sean, which is the sister of Winston Pearson. Mother Kyra Smith. Joanne Littlejohn, which is the mother of Colina Gonzalez. Mother Vera Drew. Nathan Lake, which is my father. And Kiara Casey, which is my niece. For birthdays for this week, we had our very own Brandy Purifoy on the 21st, and we had Anidria Green on the 24th. Amen. Happy birthday, ladies. If you would like to contribute to Abundant Love Ministries, you can do this of many of ways. You can give through our cash app. Our cash app name is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. That's capital A, capital L, capital C. You can give mobily through Givelify. Our Givelify name is Abundant Love Church. Just make sure that says here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Or you can mail in your contribution. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 6577 here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. The zip code is 46896. Or you can drop it off here at Abundant Love Church. Our physical location is 2615 New Haven Avenue. If you are in the area, you can join us for our regular worship services. Our live stream times are on Sundays, we have Sunday school live stream at 9 a.m. We have our Sunday school class here in the sanctuary about 9.50 a.m. And then of course our morning worship at 10.45 a.m. On Wednesdays, we have intercessory prayer at 6 p.m. followed by our Disciples Academy Bible study at 6.30 p.m. If you miss any of the live streams, all of these are archived for you. You can find those on the Facebook page, Abundant Love Church, or you can go to our YouTube channel, capital A, 
capital L Ministries. These are all of our announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Now in the hands of the praise team. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 All right. Come on, praise team. Come on. Amen. We got one selection from the praise team. We'll get one from the choir and we'll move on here. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many know the Lord is good? How many know that God gave his son because he loved us? And because he loved us, we loved him. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. Say amen for the praise team. Everyone sing, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Because you care for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you, 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 Lord, today. Because you care, because you care for me. A special way, and yes, I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. My heart, my mind. Clap your hands one more time. Thank you, Jesus. That's why my heart. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen. All right. How many know Emmanuel is God with us? Amen. We're going to sing Emmanuel this morning. All right. 
Somebody say, Emmanuel, God with us. How many know the Lord is with us? 
Amen. And we've come this Christmas morning to praise the Lord because the Lord is worthy of praise. How many know the Lord is worthy of praise? Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Amen. God bless you. How many know the Lord is with us? Emmanuel. 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 We worship you. 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 Last time. We worship you. Come on, now clap your hands right there, everybody. You're not clapping your hands. Amen. Now close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to imagine that you woke up this morning in Ukraine. Probably no tree, probably no electricity, no concept of where the meal was coming from, not knowing if an attack was imminent. But instead of Ukraine, you woke up this morning in the United States, in your bed with warm covers. Like the young people used to say, he not only woke you up this morning, he started you on your way. That's enough to lift your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Amen. Certainly we do thank the Lord, amen, for this Christmas morning. We have come to celebrate the birth of the king. Amen. And I, I understand, trust me, I understand how big of a holiday Christmas is, and I understand that it is a family day, and I understand that it's a holiday, and that people, uh, of course, want to spend time with their family, and I second that motion because I'm going to spend time with my family, too. But I want you to understand who your family is. The Bible says that Jesus was preaching in one place on one occasion, and his mother and sisters and brothers showed up. Standing outside, they sent a message into him and said, Your mother and brethren are outside desiring to speak with you. A lot of people ain't going to like this answer, but this is what Jesus said. He said, Who is my mother and brother? And then he spread his hand to the disciples and said, these that do the will of my father. Can I say something to you? If your family don't know Jesus, you're not going to spend eternity with them. You're going to spend eternity with the saints of God. Look over at somebody and say, we're going to spend eternity together. Now look at that person again. Y'all mansion might be on the same street. Y'all might be neighbors up there. Amen. 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 The Bible says in my father's house are many, there are many mansions. And to prove to us that he was telling the truth, he said, if, if it were not so, he said, I wouldn't have told you. He said, but I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And I don't know about you, but I want to be where Jesus is. Amen. There's peace in his presence, and his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. And so we look forward to the day that we can spend eternity with him. But until that day, we will occupy and praise him. Amen. All right, clap your hands one more time. I want you to prepare yourselves to give uh, today. Amen. This is your Christmas gift today. Amen. Not just the gift you give to your family, but we're going to give to the house of the Lord. If you are in the sanctuary this morning uh, and you're going to use cash or a check, you need an envelope. And so 
they will see that you get an envelope this morning. If you make a check out, make that check out to the Abundant Love Church. On the envelope, if you would write your name legibly, please, with today's date and your amount so that they can give you proper credit for that contribution. Incidentally, if you're going to give by your credit card or your debit card, uh, you can see Sister Natasha Hilliard, and she has the card slider for us today. She will come to your location, and she will take your contribution uh, in the privacy of that area. Then, of course, last but certainly not least, uh, if you are going to give today by your mobile phone, um, I, you know, I've been converted. Um, I've, 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 you know, I've been converted now. I don't write very many checks, um, but a cash app seems to be one of those avenues uh, that I use quite frequently now. Uh, a lot of my family doesn't know it, but uh, even though they're going to get a card today, there won't be any cash in that card because the cash will be on their cash app address. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you're going to use your mobile phone, you can give by um, the app Givelify, and we can be found under the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And if you're going to use cash app, our cash app address is dollar sign abundant love church. Amen. Abu dollar sign abundant love church. And so uh, we certainly want to give and be uh, good givers today. Amen. All right. Look over somebody and give them a Christmas smile. Amen. Now, 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 I want you all to, I want you all to uh, understand that love has to come along with the gift. Amen. Amen. A gift without love is an empty gift. Amen. But when love is there, the Bible says it not only answers all purpose, but love will cover a multitude of fault and sin. Amen. All right. All right. Let's pray this morning. <clears throat> Father, in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, we thank you for this occasion and we thank you for this day. The day that we commemorate the birth of the Savior. Uh, for certainly a child was given to us. A son is born. Uh, he has the government on his shoulder, his name. Is called Wonderful. He's a counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is Savior of the world. We thank you that he came in our stead to take away our sins. Father, please know that we're grateful and we're thankful for this day, for all that you've given and the benefits that you have daily loaded us with. We thank you now for this opportunity to give back a portion of what you have given to us. Just perform your word to us as we give. Let it be given to us. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Let men give into our bosoms, and that the name of the Lord would be magnified and blessed. We thank you for it, and we claim it all in Jesus' name. The Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. And amen. All right, they're going to serve you right now, and and we're going to sing something. Absolutely. And I seen Teresa came in today. Did she bring her violin with her? She got her violin with her. Oh yeah, we're gonna hear some violin this morning. Amen. How many know we're supposed to encourage our young people? Amen. Amen. She wasn't able to be here on the Christmas program, but it's Christmas Day right now, and we're going to hear from Sister Teresa today. How about that? Yeah. Amen. All right. Everybody is given. Everybody is given. Everybody is given. How many know it's a blessing to be able to give? Amen. Do you all really believe the scriptures? Do you believe it when it says it is more blessed to 
give than to amen. Is that why we buy so many gifts at Christmas time? Is that the reason? Is that the reason just about the time we think we're done that we got to come up with another gift, somebody else that we didn't put on? Is that the reason why? Amen. Because we just love to give. That's the reason why. Okay, don't y'all fool me today now. All right, God bless you. All right, clap your hands one more time. Thank you for your contribution. Amen, amen. So we're waiting. We're waiting for Teresa to get uh, prepared for us. All right, we're gonna get her. We're gonna let give her a little time to to get straight over there. Amen. <laughs> we'll give her a little time. All right, all right. How many? How many have um, an outing prepared today with your family? Amen. Real family and extended family. You know the thing I love about the church family is that you get an opportunity to have more people in your family. Amen. Incidentally, I'm from a large family, uh, a very large family. In fact, my family is so large that no one's house can hold all of us at the same time. And so we go to the largest houses and do what we can, but we just uh, don't have enough room. But I love the setting when the family gets together. And it's not really about the gifts. It's just about the fellowship. It's about having fun. And I believe that heaven is going to be one of the greatest family reunions that we can ever experience. You'll not only have your family and your friends, we'll have saints through the ages. Amen. Saints that helped us grow and mature in the Lord. And, 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 and the Bible says that we'll come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. The Bible says we're going to sit down. Are you all ready for this? We're going to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Man, my, father, my, my pastor said, uh, I'm going to look up David and ask him, how did you feel when you took your, slew, your slingshot and hit Goliath and let him fall? He said he's going to look up Moses and say, how did you feel when you grabbed your rod and stretched it out over the Red Sea and it opened up? And that's okay. I want to you know, see David and I want to see Moses, but I want to see Jesus. Amen. I want to look upon his face and thank him for his saving grace. Amen. Amen. All right. I think we're just about ready. Amen. How many know we're supposed to encourage our young people? Amen. Amen. We want to encourage. That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's, okay. No, y'all got to get her out of that corner. Y'all got to bring her around here. So we need to see her. Amen. She, she brought back some memories. Amen. When I was in the sixth grade, I played a violin. Only the sixth grade. I said only the sixth grade. When the sixth grade was over, the violin playing was over. And I don't think my parents were, uh, you know, they, I ain't going to say how glad they were, but they was happy that I took up another instrument. Amen. <laughs> All right, this is, okay, all right, this is Teresa. Okay, let it down just a little bit so that we can see her. Oh, I tell you what, hey, say, Chris, can we angle her this way? So, okay, all right, let's angle her. We want her to see her music, but we want the people to see her. So we're going to get the other camera shot. I want you to know. Okay, not right in front of, I don't want it right in front of her face. We want to see, we want everybody to see you here on Christmas morning playing your violin. All right, everybody, come on, let's give her a hand. <laughs> Amen. Do, will she need a microphone, Chris? Can we set a microphone up for her? Do we need, okay, take a microphone and set over in front of her. Yeah, we, yeah, we ready, we ready, ready. Okay, he got number three. All right, bring it over. Yes, turn it towards her. Yeah, put it on the other side. The, put the microphone on the other side. There you go. We trying to see her. That's why. I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing covering her up. All right. 
There you go. The other way. <laughs> the other way. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. Come on, clap your hands one more time for Sister Teresa. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful job. Didn't she do a wonderful job? Everybody say, you go, Teresa. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that, you know, it never sounded like that when I was doing it. Amen. All right. Encourage Amen. Encourage your children. How many know it takes a village? The old African proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. And how many know you need a church in that village? Amen. If you just leave your child to the village alone, uh, you may have some problems. They may give your child uh, some advice that's not wholesome, that is not, uh, well, they, they didn't call it the village back when I was coming up. They called it the streets. And they tried to keep us out of the streets. Come on now, if you born, if you born after 1955, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. The streets have a way of educating your children in things that you don't want them to know. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us to train up a child in the way he should go. There's a way a child should go. And when he's older, he won't depart from that way. That is, if he's trained up in that way. And so we want to bend the sapling while it's young. You all know what bend the sapling means, don't you? Yeah. Amen. You spare the rod. Y'all, you know, the, y'all, no, y'all don't believe that anymore. Y'all don't believe that. But the Bible is right. And so we want to, we, not just to beat them, because the Bible says beat them. <laughs> But the Bible says, if you beat them, they won't die. And you will save them from a lot of things. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. See, because if you lay hands on them, you will stop the policeman from laying hands on them. Amen. So we're certainly happy for Teresa and happy for her bringing her violin this morning. She plays so wonderfully. Come on, give her another hand. Amen. It seemed like to me I'm going to have to have her play again for me today. Amen. Bring it back in a couple of weeks. Learn me a new song and let's hear it, okay? Amen. All right. And if your child plays an instrument, if they play a clarinet or a flute or, or whatever instrument they're playing, amen, in school, 
we want to give them that same opportunity, opportunity rather, here in church. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you all for braving the elements uh, today to come out to worship. But it's your reasonable service. Amen. Amen. We're here to worship the Lord for so many great things he's done for us. So I have a short message here this morning because um, uh, our family's getting together later today and uh, certainly to enjoy the Lord and to enjoy the presence of our family. Amen. How many know that families are important? Whatever denomination your family is, some of us are from large families, some of us from smaller families, some of us, you know, are, you know, at the present time, uh, the denomination of our family has changed. Some people that were with us last year are not with us this year. And then the good thing is that some people who were not with us last year are here with us this year. Amen. And that's the cycle of life. Amen. Nobody comes here to stay. Some people come in. Some people stay longer than others. But we all come and we all leave. So it's not if you're going to leave here. It's where are you going when you leave. Amen. Amen. I've been in a few places uh, where, you know, people, I've heard about parties and get-togethers and things that were really going late into the evening. And when people were ready for it to end, they would come through and say, you don't have to go home, but you got to get up out of here. Well, let me tell you something. When you get up out of here, your intention should be to go home. It's where you want to make your home. Amen. I want to live with the Lord. I want to live with him. And this Christmas holiday that we celebrate really celebrates the provision that God has made for us so that we can live and spend eternity with him. Amen. Let me see your hand if you want to spend eternity with God. Amen. Every hand should be up. I heard that eternity is too long to be away from God. Hell is too hot to be away from God. And so we want to spend our time and spend our lives trying to please God. And as we attempt to please God, he will help us and receive us into his kingdom. Amen. 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 You stop listening to these people who say the church ain't right. The church ain't right. They're right. The church ain't right. Church ain't perfect. You know why it ain't perfect? Because you in it. And long as you in it, it's not going to be perfect. The only one perfect is Jesus Christ, and we're working and striving towards perfection. Amen? Amen. Judgment is given to none of us. None of us have the right to judge. In fact, the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. Because the way you judge people is the way people are going to judge you. So it's just good to leave all judgment to God. Amen. It's not our church. It's God's church. God knows what he's doing with his church. And when the time is right, the Bible said he's coming back for his church. And at that time, the church is not going to have spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. Amen. He's going to prepare us for that day. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. I want to call your attention to two verses. I'm going to use one of the verses uh, from our theme for the month. Our theme for the month has been the gift of love. We found that theme in the book of St. John chapter 3. I'm only going to use verse 16 this morning, and then I'm going to couple that with Romans 6 and 23. I want to thank Jason Bush. Uh, he's not here now, but uh, Ebony had to work today, and he so graciously ran by our service and played for us before he went to his own service this morning. And so uh, he, my son anyway, he, he just lived with Pastor Lester Bush, but he's my son uh, me and him traded sons. He took Gary, and I took Jason. So uh, that's just about the way it is. Amen. 
But I certainly thank the Lord for my son, too. He's playing good this morning. Amen. And Corey, good to see you this morning. And it's good to see all of you all this morning. Amen. Mother Thomas got that hat on, just all leaned over to the side. She got, she got, she got the mother's look on this morning. Amen. Sister Pearson got that hat all flopping down. Amen. You got to go like this to see who that is under that hat. Amen. All right. God bless you. All right. You all stand with me. Let me read a couple of scriptures here. Amen. Good to see Pastor Carolyn here in our midst here uh, this morning. Good to see Julia all the way from Indianapolis here this morning. Amen. Good to see Monique here from New York. Amen. This morning. Good to see uh, Sister Josephine soon to be leaving us. Amen. I believe to I believe to South Carolina, I believe. Amen. Oh, oh. All right. Okay, all right. I shouldn't be crying this morning. All right. You know what? When the Lord opens a door and it is the Lord's doing. You grab your courage and you go forward. Amen. Amen. So when it's the Lord's doing, you want to be in the Lord's will. You know, sometimes we miss the Lord, though. And you know what you do when you miss the Lord? You turn around and go back. Amen, somebody. So we are praying the best for you in South Carolina. But if South Carolina don't be what you want it to be, pack your bags and me and Rayfield will come get you bring you back home. Amen. And this is always home. Amen. All right. God bless you. Okay. St. John 316. I'm going to read just the 16th verse and I'm going to read Romans 423 in your hearing for time's sake. St. John 316, one of the most popular verses in the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Flip over uh, a couple of books over to Romans. <clears throat> Chapter number 6 and verse 23. Romans 6, 23 says this. It says, for, because... The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to read the B part of that verse again. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless you and bless his word. You may be seated. Uh, just for a few moments, I want to talk to you from this subject, the perfect gift. Look at somebody and say, the perfect gift. The perfect gift. Amen. Some of us have some presents to open later today. And some of us have expectations for those gifts we're going to open. Most of us are grateful for whatever we get, but sometimes we are looking for one specific gift. You all can say amen if I told the truth. Amen. amen. We don't want to be like Charlie Brown and find a piece of coal wrapped up for us or in our sack. Amen. Sometimes we have seen something or desired something that we believe will be just perfect for us. Some have even dropped hints about what they wanted. Amen. Last year I asked my grandchildren what they wanted. And they gave me a list and I got them what they asked for. <clears throat> this year when I asked them, uh, they gave me a list that Probably would have been perfect for them, uh, but a little salty for me. 
Amen. Because people get in mind when it comes to gift, what will be the perfect gift for them? And so this is the time of year where, where much time, much effort, and much money is spent to locate the perfect gift. Sometimes we have something in mind for a person, and we'll go to a store, and it's not there. And we won't just grab something out of that store. We'll go to another store. We'll check online. Uh, there are many ways we look because sometimes we have in mind that a certain gift is just going to be right for a certain person and nothing other than that gift will do. How am I talking here today? Amen. It's kind of like chocolate. You can't, you know, a real chocolate lover, you can't just give them any kind of chocolate. There's a certain kind of chocolate you have to give a real chocolate lover. You need something gourmet with smooth and even texture and pristine nuts and uh, well, let me get back to my message here. I'm just saying that sometimes you know a person, and because you know a person, you know the gift that will fit them. Amen. And we call it the perfect gift. Um, a gift is given as an expression of love from the giver to the receiver, but the perfect gift does much more than that. The perfect gift when given not only expresses love from the giver to the receiver, but the perfect gift will communicate the depth of that person's love. Amen. I can give you an apple if I love you, but a diamond ring says so much more about how I love you. And so the perfect gift communicates uh, to the receiver, it re communicates the depth, it communicates the intensity, and it communicates the character, the, the integrity of that love that you're trying to communicate. Amen? Amen. Uh, the perfect gift doesn't just happen. You don't just willy-nilly go into a place and find the perfect gift, and that's it. But the perfect gift is a result of the careful and thoughtful consideration of the giver. When the perfect gift is given, the giver has stopped for a moment, looked at the receiver, and analyzed what would be just right for them. Sometimes the gift doesn't come overnight. Sometimes you have to think about it. You got to marinate on it. Sometimes you got to do a little research. Sometimes to get the perfect gift, you have to watch people uh, to see how they act, to see what they like, to see what they do. Sometimes for the perfect gift, uh, you have to kind of look around in the house to make sure they don't already have, ain't nobody saying nothing in here, they don't already have what you're trying to give them. Because you want to give a gift that, that, uh, that will express what you're trying to express to them, and that is uh, the expression of love. The perfect gift then is a result of careful, thoughtful thought and meditation about not just the gift, but the receiver of the gift. Uh, a, the perfect gift, it is the presentation of a well thought out and fitting gift. And this gift not only expresses love to the receiver, but this gift, when it's the perfect gift, embodies the character and the personality of the giver. See, the gift doesn't only say something about the person who's going to get it. The gift says something about the person who gives it when the gift is perfect. When the gift is perfect, it not only says something about the receiver and what the giver thinks about the receiver, but it says something about the giver. Amen. Who is that has the slogan that says, when you care enough to give the very best, 
That's not talking about the receiver. That's talking about the giver of the gift. And so, and so the perfect gift, it embodies the character. It embodies the personality of the giver in his affection and his admiration for the receiver. The perfect gift when appropriately chosen, uh, does uh, more than a few things. It expresses and communicates love. It adequately fits the character and the personality of the giver. And the perfect gift addresses the character, the need, and the pleasure of the receiver. When the perfect gift is given, it fits the character of the person you gave it to. It not only pleasures them and makes them feel good, it's something that they need and that they could use. See, I don't like giving gifts that they use only on Christmas Day and then they don't think about it anymore. You want to give them the kind of gift that they're not only that they're so pleasantly uh, pleased to receive, but that's useful for them. You want to give them the kind of thing that they don't only use at Christmas Day, but they use it. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. Amen. Just keep looking straight ahead. Uh, but have you ever bought something for somebody and they uh, gave you a cameo appearance of what they, you know, you gave them and you never seen it again? Just keep, don't look at nobody right now. Just keep looking. Just keep, just keep looking straight. Keep looking straight. I'm going to tell you what happened to that gift. Either it's back in the back of the closet and it's unseen, or it got rewrapped. You see somebody say, oh, I bought so-and-so a dress just like that. No, that's the dress you bought. <laughs> so, so, listen, so thought has to go into it. Thought has, thought has to go into it. Not just to give a gift. But to give an appropriate gift, a gift that adequately represents you as the giver of the gift and adequately uh, appeals to the receiver of the gift so that they're happy, they're pleasured by it, they're needing it, it's useful to them, and it says, I love you and I care for you. That's the perfect gift. The perfect gift is a benefit not just to the receiver, but it's a benefit to both the giver and the receiver. In our text today, the book of Romans says the wages of sin is death. But the B part of that verse says, but, I love this but, because the but tells us the other side of the coin. It says that if you live a life that's in transgression of God's word, death is the outcome of it. But the gift of God not something that, you, see, you earn hell by transgressing. Wages is something that you get payment for. It says that death is the payment for a life that transgresses the law of God. But the gift, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, that is, God is the first and greatest gift giver. God is the progenitor. He is the first one to give. Everything that we have has been given to us out of the benevolence and the love of God. And because God is love. All of his gifts are motivated and given in love. And so when he gave Jesus, who is the greatest and most precious, Jesus is the ultimate expression of God's deep and unconditional love for us. When God, who is love and full of majesty and power and holiness, when God got ready to express this unconditional agape without obligation or prerequisite love to us, what he came up with was the giving of Jesus Christ to perfectly express how he feels about us. Thank you, Jesus. 
And so Jesus is the expression of that love, but he's more than that. Isaiah said, unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. You know who gave him? God gave him. For God so loved the world that he gave. This is the son that was given. And this given son, the Bible says, has the government upon his shoulders. That is, we don't live by the system here. We are citizens of another kingdom. Amen. We have another ruler and he has the government. He has the structure and the rules and the regulations that will regulate our lives in a positive and a blessed direction. He has the government on his shoulder. His name is so great that, but I'll give you a few distinctions. His name is wonderful. He is a counselor. I don't care what kind of problem you get in. Jesus has the answer for your situation. Andre Kraut said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. That's because Jesus is the way. He's wonderful. He's a counselor. He is not just God. He's the mighty God. He's not a weak God. He's not like the God of idols and wood and stone that have eyes and they can't see and mouths and they can't talk. He's not like Baal that if you're going to move him to another place, you got to put him on a wagon and help him move to the next place. Our God is mighty. He's, I'm, I'm getting excited. Our God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's not just a father. He's an everlasting father. He's not a deadbeat father. He's not a run out on your father. When he becomes your father, he's there with you till the end. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Man, he's a father that you can depend on. And then he is the prince of peace. He's the orchestrator of peace. When you have confusion and chaos and trauma in your life, Jesus is able to bring peace to your situation. Amen. He said, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, give I unto thee. Peace that passes all understanding. Have you ever been in a situation where it looked like everything is going crazy and you got a calm spirit because you trust God? Bless his name. And so he's the prince of peace. In fact, when God gave Jesus, he gave us the perfect gift. Look at somebody say, Jesus is the perfect gift. I'm just about done. The word perfect has two primary definitions. Man, the first definition is to be flawless and without error. Something is perfect when it's excellent and it has no mistakes and no errors in it. Hello, somebody. Then the second definition is the one that God uses for us in St. Matthew 5, 48, where it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's not flawless and without error. That's complete. That's total. That second definition of uh, perfect means to be whole. W-H-O-L-E. It means to be totally complete, lacking no pieces and having every essential thing. And when God gave Jesus, Jesus flawlessly and completely expressed the deep love of God. He lacked nothing as he represented God and represented God's character. Jesus lacked nothing when he represented the holiness of God. And even though he came Fully God, he was a man and understood our needs and he was able to satisfy the righteous needs of a sinful people. He wasn't so high and holy that he couldn't come down to our level and not only touch us, but bring us up to a place where we are received by God. I want you to know something. You are received by God not because you quit smoking and put the bottle down. You are received by God because Jesus made the sacrifice sacrifice for your sins in your place and if we receive him whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life and so he represented the love of God he represented God and he represented us look at somebody say Jesus represented God's love 
Tell them, say, he represented God. And he represented us. Yeah, yeah. You remember a few years ago, everybody was talking about represent. Amen. They meant stand up for what you believed in. Be a good example and a representative for the principles that you were standing for. And Jesus represented. He represented the love of God. And we see Jesus perfectly communicated God's love to us. It was God that loved the world in such a way that he gave Jesus. Jesus, uh, the giving of Jesus was prompted by the God or by the love of God. God, who is love loved us in such a way that it prompted him and it compelled him to give. And what he gave by being prompted by that love was Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave his life. It is the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and the death of Jesus that totally and completely expresses the depth of God's unconditional love. It's not just that God loved us, but God wanted us to be saved. And God, as a just God, knew that every sin had to be paid for and just like one man took us all into sin it was the justice of God that declared one man had to bring us out of sin and so it was given Jesus was given to us without obligation without payment he gave us not just the gift he gave us look at somebody say the perfect gift uh, the perfect gift communicated not just that God loved us. It communicated how much God loved us. He didn't send an angel. He didn't send a seraphim. He didn't send a cherubim. He didn't make a, a miracle or some kind of creation to send for us. But incarnate means that God himself stepped into flesh. Infinity stepped into a finite form. An all-present God went into one location and good God almighty the all powerful God that made everything and created everything took a helpless position laid down in a manger wrapped up by straps his love brought him down his love brought him out of heaven his love got him off the throne, sitting by the majesty of God. His love brought him down through 40 and two generations. And then he showed up in Bethlehem on a Christmas morning just like this. And the angels announced a boy child is born over in Bethlehem. Bless his name. So Jesus represented the love of God and he represented the perfect love of God. And Jesus flawlessly and completely represents God the Father. And then he not only represents the love that God gave, Jesus represents God. He's the perfect gift because he's not just good for representing the love of God. If we want to know what God is like, we have to look at Jesus. The Bible says in St. John 14 that Thomas looked at Jesus and said, look, just show us the Father and it will suffice us. We're talking all about the Spirit. I can't see the Spirit. You're talking about our Heavenly Father. you here with us every day. I want to believe. Just show us the Father and it will suffice us. Jesus said, boy, what's wrong with you? If you didn't see the Father, you didn't see me because I and my Father father are one because i am the perfect representation of god the father i am emmanuel i am god in the flesh and so jesus perfectly i got to close this message here jesus perfectly represents the character of god the person of God. And we know that God is a holy God. And his character never changes. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's character is stellar. He, he's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. He's full of truth. And his makeup is agape, unconditional love. And so when God got ready to send an ambassador and send a representative, he had to be a holy representative he had to be full of mercy and full of grace and truth he had to be full of love and so God said that I will just prepare me a body and I'll go down and he came down in the fullness of the Godhead and he is Emmanuel God with us and so Jesus flawlessly 
and completely represented God. He didn't half step representing God. He said, if you want to know who God is, look on me. If you want to know what God loves, look on me. If you want to know how God responds, look at me. And the Bible says, he says, I do only those things that please my father my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and so the father work and I work hitherto that means if God is not working I'm not at work but anytime you see me working you see the father working that's because I adequately and flawlessly and completely represent God look at somebody say he represented God he represented God well, and, and I got the clothes and get out of here. But Jesus was not only a representation of the love of God. And Jesus was not only a representation of the holiness of God. But Jesus had another side of the coin where he represented us. Jesus knows what it feels like to be tempted in every point and yet without sin. Jesus knows what it means like to be battled by the enemy while you're trying to do God's will. Jesus understands that when I would do good that evil is always present. And Jesus understands that if I get in the word of God uh, and obey the word of God uh, and walk in the will of God uh, that the spirit of God uh, will descend on me uh, and light on me like a dove uh, and empower me look at somebody say empower me to do God's will the Bible says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father. And because Jesus is God and man, he's not just God, but Jesus is God and man. He's a hundred percent God and he's a hundred percent man. And because he's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man, he's the perfect medium. He's the perfect middle man. He can represent God and he can represent us. He knows God is holy and know that we're unholy. And that's why he hung down between heaven and earth to make us right. Look at somebody say the perfect gift. He's the perfect gift. And I'm closing with this because the Bible says that God demanded a sacrifice for all of our sins. God demanded a payment for transgression. Every transgression, the Bible says, receives a just recompense. That means every time the will of God is transgressed, it's got to be paid for. But the perfect gift in Jesus Christ paid for our sin. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let me close this. I thought about the song that the sunbeamers used to sing. They said, search me. Search me, Lord. Search me, search me, Lord. Turn the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything, if you find anything, if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out. Look, somebody say, take it out. Take it out. Take out everything that's not like God. Take out everything that separates me from the presence of God. Take out everything that takes my joy. Take out everything that robs my peace. Take out everything. Take it out. Straighten me. Strengthen me. Lord.
the perfect gift. I'm done. Mm, I'm done. I got collard greens and cornbread waiting at the house. I got ham and biscuits waiting at the house. But I thought about the word that says, oh, taste and see that the Lord, the Lord is good. Yeah! Look at somebody say, the perfect gift. The perfect gift. God gave us the perfect gift. God gave us the perfect gift. Thank you, Jesus. The perfect gift. Leave me alone. The perfect gift. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I got to go home. Thank you, Lord. The perfect gift will wash away all your sins. What can wash away my sins? Tide won't do it. Cheer won't do it. Dawn won't do it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. From day to day. From day to day. It'll never. It'll never. The blood will never lose its power. The song said it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. And it's that blood that gives me strength from day to day. God gave us the perfect gift. Perfect enough to represent heaven and perfect enough to correct the earth. To represent righteousness and erase unrighteousness. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men unto me. It's the gift that God gave. There's a song we sing at communion. I'm done. We start singing, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Say, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Then it says, oh, oh, sometimes the thought of it causes me to tremble. And when you think what God could have done instead of saving us, you know, let me tell you what we do. We buy something new, we're going to get all the good out of it. But if it start cutting up, we're going to fix it a few times. But if we have to fix it too many times, it's gone. Recycling is not a new idea. It originated with God. There are two occasions in particular that God spoke about destroying everybody and starting again. The first one was in Noah's day. He said, listen, do you know how bad sin has to be for God to start saying, it's repented me that I even made man. Now God is sure of everything and he's omnipotent, he's all powerful. But this is meant to give us a barometer on how bad it was. God said, it repented me. Which loosely translated is, did I do the right thing here? It's so bad, 
and destroy all of them. And while he's contemplating getting rid of all of us, the Bible says that Noah found grace. Now you all have to help me because you all told me that grace is the unmerited favor of God, which means you can't do nothing to get it. But it didn't say grace failed to Noah. It said he found it. Normally when you find something, you're looking for it. Noah found a place that instead of destroying everybody, he was the one that God saved. When I think about that, God could have destroyed everybody and Noah and started all over. The second time is when Moses is up on Mount Sinai getting the Ten Commandments. They fresh out of Egypt. I mean fresh out. Of, they haven't been gone a month. Moses goes up on the mountain. The Bible says while all that glory is going on on top of the mountain, God wrote the Ten Commandments. It says written with the finger of God. And while he's up there in the glory, they down at the bottom of the hill saying, we don't know what happened to that man. He's been gone too long. Aaron, we need jelly back, Aaron. We need you to make us a God that brought us out of Egypt. Aaron said, bring me your earrings, bring me your bracelets, your necklaces. Bible says he threw them in the fire. Now let me tell y'all something. You can't just throw gold in the fire and it come out like something. Somebody have to shape it and form it. What Aaron did, Aaron overseen the elevation of an idol god while the law is coming on the mountain. God stops mid-sentence and said, get down from here, Moses. Your people have corrupted themselves already. Moses said, my people. I didn't even want to go to Egypt. You sent me. You told me to tell Pharaoh, let your people go. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to destroy all of them. I'm going to make a new nation out of you. Listen at the wisdom of Moses. He said, God, you can't do that. He said, you'll tarnish your name if you do that. The heathen will say you were not able to deliver your people. Don't you know you get in some tests where it look like you're going down? And God can't let you go down. You know why? Your name is not on the line. His name is on the line. He could have destroyed all of them. When I think about all God did to save us. It's too, it's too much for me to understand. It makes me tremble sometime the way the Lord loves us. And so I want to encourage you all this Christmas Day. Go enjoy your family. Enjoy your gifts. Revel in the, the social aspect of your family. But periodically stop and remember what this day is really about. When we understand that it was the sacrifice and the gift of heaven that God gave, I think we will know that he gave us the perfect gift. He gave us just what we needed. Amen? All right, clap your hands right there. That's where I'm going to finish. Thank you for your patience. I'm about six minutes over, but we started about six minutes late, so I'm on time. Amen? All right, I want to offer prayer just real quickly. I'm not going to call you to the altar, but if you desire prayer, just stand where you are because I believe in prayer. The reason I believe in prayer because prayer changes things. Prayer not only changes things, prayer changes people. The Bible says that he spoke a parable that men ought always pray. Then Paul said, pray for all men everywhere. Then he told one church, I have not ceased to make mention of you in my prayers. And I think if we get to heaven, 
if there can be any regrets. If you get to heaven, there are going to be no regrets. But I think if there could be a regret when we got to heaven, I think it's going to be knowing what we could have used while we were down here and we didn't put into practice. And I think that prayer is the silent weapon of the saint. Praise gets a whole lot of advertisement about being a weapon. But I believe prayer is a very, very powerful weapon. The Bible says Elijah was a man of like passions like us. Prayed and it didn't rain. One man's prayer stopped rain on the earth, the whole earth, for three and one half years. And then that same man prayed again and rain came. That's the power of prayer when we pray in the will of God. Lift your hands to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these that have come today to honor you. They honor your birth and they honor your coming into the world. They honor you by worship and admiration and adoration of the great God that you are and the great things that you have done. Before we go to other celebrations, we pause here now to celebrate you, your coming, the giving of your life, the shedding of your blood, you paying the penalty for our sins, the chastisement of our peace, the chastisement, the punishment that brought our peace was laid upon you. He, he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Please know we're grateful. And we are thankful. You've done so much for us, we can't even tell you or thank you enough. But Father, as we raise our hands today, you know exactly what we need. Some have conditions in their body. Some have circumstances in their family. Some have challenges uh, that are waiting for them as they return. You are the God. That said, everything's going to work together for our good when we're called according to your purpose. So work it out for our good and for your glory. Bless the remainder of this day. Let it be filled with the joy of the Christ child. We do love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen and amen. All right, God bless you. I'm going to... Are there any announcements? Yes. <clears throat> Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Gaither. Keith the Gray. Come on, come on, come on, Gaither. They didn't call you. They didn't call you.